The Ranch It was a late spring afternoon. Shu Jun and Shi Yan drove to Preston's ranch, where his parents were having a barbecue. Preston and Shi Yan worked in the same research project. He said the barbecue was an annual event, and he told Shi Yan that his cousin Fei was coming, and he wanted Shu Jun and Fei to meet. The flat plain along the highway was a blanket of light blue, pink, and yellow wildflowers. After a hundred miles or so, the landscape turned hilly. They looked at the map Preston had drawn for them. His ranch must be close. The slopes had become a map of glittering deep purple Texas blue bonnets and scarlet red Indian paintbrush. Most of Preston's relatives had arrived. They were dressed in crisp checkered cowboy shirts and expensive looking jeans, and they said friendly hellos to Xu Jin and Shi Yan. Preston said the ranch, hundreds of square miles, was handed down from his great grandfather whose first name was also Preston. The younger generation had all left and settled somewhere else, but his parents were still taking care of the cattle on the ranch. The scent of hickory smoke filled the air. A long table was set under a gigantic oak tree. Two big fires had been set up, and on a long picnic table were slabs of barbecued ribs, chicken, beans, and salads. A feast was just beginning. Xu Jin saw a jeep approaching. In the driver's seat was Preston's cousin Faye. She wore a checkered shirt with strips of matching calfskin on the shoulders, and her sandy hair was held by pale blue ribbon. Her gray-blue eyes smiled as Preston introduced her. Although Faye looked young, Xu Jin could see fish lines around her eyes when she smiled. She said Preston had told her that Xu Jin liked to read and to write. She had also loved to read and to write since grammar school and still had not gotten time to go about it. Xu Jin said that when they had moved from the East Coast, she had left behind her furniture, new refrigerator, and everything else. The only thing she brought with her was boxes of her hardcover books. She would never have expected to become so allergic to ink. All the books were still in boxes, stored in the separate garage next to their house. Faye said she was envious, and it was a shame that Xu Jin could not read the books. She told Xu Jin that her ranch was right next to Preston's parents. If you could look over the hills and see the house on the hill behind that, that's mine. Now you probably cannot see it clearly, but when it gets dark, you'll see the light in my windows. She said she had some cattle on her ranch. A family living on the ranch was helping her take care of them. She had been divorced, and her ex-husband and she had gone to Texas U together. He had studied architecture, and after graduation, he wanted to go to California. She went to California with him for a while and couldn't get used to the life there, so she came back. This is the land my parents left me, and it's everything to me, Faye said. For the first time in her life, Xu Jin felt deeply what Margaret Mitchell had written about a southern woman's love for her land. Faye seemed to have stepped out of the novel Gone with the Wind. The sky darkened and the stars appeared. On the faraway hill, Xu Jin saw the light in Faye's window and the silhouette of the house under the starlight. Are you afraid of living alone in that big house? Xu Jin asked. Afraid? I grew up here. I knew every tree in the land. When I was in Santa Monica and stood in line at a supermarket one day, I looked at the strangers in front and behind me, I got so scared I ran back to Texas, she chuckled. Aren't you lonely? Xu Jin asked. I don't have time to be lonely, Faye said. My house is old and needs lots of attention. I have to take care of my cattle, although I have someone helping me. And there are my relatives, my writing. I can hardly find time to write. Xu Jin looked at Faye's relatives laughing and feasting in the long table. The light in her faraway window was beckoning her. Next time you folks are here, come and visit me, you hear? Faye said. Later, Xu Jin sent Faye some of the hardcovers. Faye wrote and thanked Xu Jin, saying that these books were her favorites. She again invited Xu Jin and her family to visit her. In the late autumn of that year, Xu Jin and Shi Yan decided to take another trip to the hill country. They missed the hilly terrain and wanted to see that region again as well as its foliage. They didn't know it was hunting season. The hotel was full of hunters. They wouldn't want to be mistaken for a deer under any circumstances, so they sat in their room and looked at the few trees whose leaves were turning red outside the windows. Xu Jin thought of Fei and gave her a call. 
Faye said her ranch was off limits for hunting and very safe, and she would come and pick them up. She drove them in her jeep. The two-way paved road led to a dirt road. In front, Shujin saw the iron gate with Faye's family name on it. Then Faye drove uphill on a gravel path. Only her jeep could take that kind of journey. She passed the house where her assistant and his family lived and drove to the top of the hill. Her house was unpretentious from the outside. Inside it was spotless, and a panoramic view could be seen from Fei's windows. Xu Jun and Shi Yan could see Preston's parents' house and their ranch. The dry grass was brown in the hills. There were sparse green trees like opened umbrellas. Fei said these were mesquites. Their roots can penetrate over a hundred feet through the cracks of rocks to get to the underground water, so even during the drought, their leaves are green. Do you see Preston's parents' farm? Faye pointed it out to Xu Jin and Shi Yan. She said Preston and his brother came home now only a few times a year. The southwest side beyond her land used to belong to another cousin of theirs, and he had sold it. Only the piece adjacent to her ranch was still up for sale. It only had 29-odd acres. Would you folks be interested in buying a ranch? Faye smiled and said. 29 acres. How many cattle could be raised on 29 acres? One cow would give the whole family enough protein. Too bad Shu Jin was allergic to cow's milk. But if they bought the land, they would have some land of their own and settle down. They could erect an iron gate with their name on it at the entrance. Shu Jin stood there and didn't hear what else Fei said. After Shu Jin got back from the hill country, she couldn't get the 29 acres out of her mind. But the hill country was a little too far from Houston and that land really belonged to Faye and Preston and their relatives. They were born and raised there. The roots of the mesquite trees on the hills could dig hundreds of feet down through the cracks of rocks and get water, and Xu Jin and Shi Yan were just the reeds blown in the wind. Xu Jin's next-door neighbor Lin told her that she had bought a piece of land. It was only 30 minutes from Houston. She took Xu Jin to see what she had bought. It was prime farmland and also could be used for building houses in the future. Lean's land could accommodate 35 houses at least. The next few pieces adjacent to her land were even bigger, but they had all been bought. Only the one on her right side, because of its irregular shape, had no one interested in it. That piece, which was connected to four or five other pieces of land, could only be seen as irregular on the map. It looked like any other piece of farmland. The only difference was it had several crooked cedar trees and a small pond full of duckweed. Because the trees had grown crooked, they had no value as lumber and had to be disposed of, and the pond had to be filled for future buildings. That was why no one was interested in it. All of a sudden, Xu Jin fell in love with it. If she bought it, maybe she could be like her schoolmate Victoria, the self-made real estate millionaire, selling it by the square foot in the future. If it didn't appreciate, then they could retire early and buy a mobile home and put it next to the pond and watch the reflection of the moon on the water. They could hang a hammock between two of the crooked cedars and grow a few lines of beans behind their mobile home. Shi Yan could play his violin, and Xu Jin could do nothing but read. So Xu Jin and Shi Yan took all their savings from the bank and made a down payment for the piece of land then every month they would have only to pay the mortgage. In ten years, it would all be theirs. Although the piece of land was much smaller than the 29 acres in the hill country, it was much nearer, and on weekends, Xu Jin and Shi Yan started to visit it. They called it the ranch. They always went there in the late afternoons when the heat started to subside, driving to the end of the dirt road, trespassing on Lin's land, and coming to the ranch. They ran, laughed, and smelled the fresh smell of the soil. When they got tired of running, they sat on the crooked branch of the cedars and listened to the frogs in the pond. In the pond where the duckweed had dispersed, they could see the reflection of the moon. When it really got dark and mosquitoes started swarming around, they would run back to their car and admire the ranch from afar. Some day it would really belong to them. They would put a mobile home on the ranch, hang a hammock between the cedars, and grow a few lines of vegetables behind their little home. Recession hit Houston like a hurricane. The research department where Sir Yan and Preston had worked was the first one to be cut off. Sir Yan was transferred to the sales department. 
Several years of his, Preston's, and other colleagues' hard work had gone down the drain. Even though Sir Yan was still bringing home a check, he was miserable, and they didn't feel like going to the ranch anymore. Many of their laid-off friends had given up their professions and started little businesses of their own. Xu Zhen and Xu Yan admired them, but they had absolutely no talent for business. Xu Jin comforted Xu Yan by saying that if he was laid off, they could retire early to the ranch. But the rural school near it was backward, and it would not be fair for their children to follow them there. Xu Yan started to look for a job in other states. He found a job in California, and they had to relocate. Xu Jin called Fei. Fei said Preston had already told her about their leaving. She wished that they could stay. Xu Jin told her that they were going to live in an apartment when they moved to California. The housing there was very expensive. Xu Jin couldn't bring anything with her, and she wondered if Fei could take all the books in their garage. Fei said it wouldn't be right to take all the books. Xu Jin said that Preston and Xu Yan had worked side by side for five years. She would rather Fei have the books than that they go to strangers. Xu Jin and Xu Yan brought the books to Fei's ranch. Xu Jin couldn't believe her eyes. There was a symphony of blue bonnets on the slopes. Xu Jin and Xu Yan stayed there until evening. Then they said goodbye to Fei. The return trip was even faster. The highway had very few cars. Only the big yellow moon in the dark blue sky chased them from behind. Soon they were near where the ranch was. I want to see the ranch, Xu Jin said to Xu Yan. It's getting late. We'll see it next week, he said. What's next week, Xu Jin said. We have to pack this weekend, and next week we'll be on our way to California. The frogs were singing noisily. In the duck pond they saw a broken moon. Xu Jin patted the crooked trunks of the cedars and said goodbye to the ranch. After Xu Jin and Xu Yan moved to California, the recession in Houston became worse. They had to give up all their other investments there. But Xu Jin became as stubborn as Fei did. She wouldn't let go of the ranch. Finally, it was either food or the monthly payment of the mortgage of the ranch. They signed the document to give it back to its original owner. Xu Jin didn't cry. Someone said, anything that you looked at is all yours. Every square inch of the ranch had Xu Jin's and Xu Yan's footprints on it. And the memory of the crooked branches of the cedars the frogs singing, and the moon appearing in the duck pond, no one could take away from them. It would be theirs forever. Mm -hmm.